This video is on using integration by substitution. Um, when we use integration by substitution, what we're really doing is we're looking to get our integral into an equivalent form using a substitution um, to an integral that we already know how to integrate. And, you know, for our course here, there's typically three forms we know how to integrate at this point. We know how to take the antiderivative of uh, a base, which I'll call u to a power n, where you'll add one to the exponent and divide by that same new exponent, uh, plus c, of course. And we say n doesn't equal negative 1. Remember, that's a special case. Uh, we know the integral of e to the u du is going to be just, you know, antiderivative of e to the u is just going to be e to the u, and then plus c. And then the other case that we know how to integrate is if we had 1 over u, the antiderivative of that, remember, is the natural log of the absolute value of u, and then plus c. So, you know, these are integrals we've already talked about. Um, if you were taking a uh, full calculus one course, you would also talk about integrals that involve some trig substitutions and things like that. Um, we're not using trigonometry here, so these are the three main ones you need to know about. Uh, so you want to get into one of these three forms because if you can get into one of these three forms, then you know how to take the antiderivative. Uh, typically, this is going to happen when you have some sort of product um, or sometimes a quotient as your integrand, but we'll take a look at some examples here to show why this works. So, for this first example, um, let me just show you why this works. All right, so this isn't really us using the substitution method just yet. It's showing you where the substitution method comes from and why it would work. So if I say to find f prime of x, so find the derivative given that f of x equals 3x squared plus 2x all raised to the seventh power. So if I was trying to find f prime, right, when I look at this, to find f prime, to find the first derivative, uh, this is going to be a chain rule. All right, so f of x equals 3x squared plus 2x to the seventh. This is the chain rule. Uh, we have a function being raised to a power. Remember how the chain rule works. You take the derivative of the outside, so I'm going to bring the 7 down, all right, and keep the inside the same, so it stays 3x squared plus 2x, and then the power decreases by 1, right? That's the derivative of the outside times and we multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's what chain rule tells us to do. The derivative of the inside would be 6x, right, plus 2. So that's the derivative of this 3x squared plus 2x to the 7th power. Now I'm not going to do anything else to simplify it. I'm just going to leave it like this. But suppose, now I said, now find the antiderivative of 7 times 3x squared plus 2x to the 6th power times 6x plus 2 dx. Right, so I'm really taking what I had here. I'm saying find the antiderivative of it. Now we know what it should be because, right, we took the derivative of f of x to get to f prime of x, so the antiderivative of f prime of x should be f of x. But suppose I started you this way, right? If I just gave you this integral without telling you this other information above, you might not know what that integrates to, and you probably don't at this point. So what we do is we usually use substitution to help us uh, get into the same form that we had as uh, u to a power, and then take the antiderivative of that. And we'll first, right, so we use u substitution here. Now when I say we use u substitution, use just a dummy variable. It could be any variable you wanted to use that's not x. You can't use the same variable that's already in the problem. Um, but if I'm looking at this, you know, the first thing I look at is that I have this 3x squared plus 2x to the 6th power. So if I'm looking at this piece here being raised to a power, remember, one of the, the ways we were trying to look for was u to a power. So a lot of the times I'm going to let u equal whatever's being raised to the power. So I'm going to say uh, let u equal the 3x squared plus 2x. Right? So the inside of this being raised to a power, because then I can get u to a power if I do that. Now, if I have u, I have to find du because my antiderivative, right, this is with respect to x now. If I'm going to change these to u's, everything inside the integral has to be in terms of u, including with respect to u. Now, when you say du, this is the derivative of u. 
When I say the derivative of u, u is equal to 3x squared plus 2x. So du, the derivative of this, well, this is going to be 6x, right? 2 times 3 is 6, x to the first power plus 2. And then we write dx at the end of this, all right? Because we took the derivative of this, uh, and this is with respect to x. So we've got u equals 3x squared plus 2x. The derivative of u equals 6x plus 2 dx, because we took the derivative of this side with respect to x. And now I'm going to look back at my integral up here and say, okay, well, u was the inside of this. And then this du is equal to 6x plus 2 dx. Well, I have a 6x plus 2 dx here. Remember, I want this all to be in terms of u, so this du replaces this part. So my integral now, right, after I do my substitution, this is equal to the integral of 7 can stay 7. Constants don't really matter too much as long as all your x's get replaced with things that are in terms of u. So we got 7. This 3x squared plus 2x, well, that's u, so this would be u to the sixth power, that's me replacing the inside of that with u. Remember, I picked that at the beginning. And then the 6x plus 2dx gets replaced with du. So now I have this integral uh, in terms of u, right? So 7u to the 6 du. If there's any x's still left in this part, that means that either u substitution doesn't work or you may have made an error somewhere. And now I'm going to take the antiderivative of this like I normally would, which means that if I'm taking the integral 7u to the 6th, you know, 7 would stay in front, u to the 6, you would add 1 to the power, because now we have this in the form we know, u to a power, so add 1 to the exponent, divide by that same new exponent, and then don't forget you have to put plus c at the end. And then you should notice that 7's cancel, won't always cancel, but in this case they do. So you have u to the 7th plus c. Now we don't leave it like that, because remember my original integral is in terms of x, I want my, my solution here to be in terms of x, so now you back substitute, right? So now we back sub for u here with whatever we called u earlier. Well, u was 3x squared plus 2x. So this u to the 7th is actually going to be 3x squared plus 2x raised to the 7th power and then plus c. Um, the plus c, you know, is different than what we had originally here. But if this is the, you know, f prime of x, the antiderivative of it, we don't know. There could be an unknown constant there. Uh, so, you know, there's many antiderivatives, right? The plus C is just what changes, the constant changes. When you take the derivative of this, you would have gotten what was inside of here. So, you know, a lot of the times, because we're looking for three very specific forms, we're going to try to let U be the part that I need, going back to this, just so we can see what we're talking about here. Right here... Like, if I see something with a power on it, that's how I pick u to be the inside. Because I was like, I know how to take antiderivatives of something to a power. So I let u equal the inside, like I did in the last one. If you see e's in your uh, integrand, you might want to let u equal the exponent on e. Because that's how we get e to the u power. And if you see uh, a u to the, or a, a function of the first power in your denominator, you might want to let u equal the denominator. Because that's how you can get a 1 over u. So those are the ways you can kind of think about picking whatever u is. We're going to do a, quite a few examples on this. Um, but, you know, those are the ways to think about picking u. So you want u to be something that will fit one of these forms. Uh, let's take a look at some examples. So that first example is showing us why it works. Now we're just going to be, you know, given the integral and we're going to work from there. So for this first example... Uh, if I had the integral of 4x to the third power times x to the fourth plus 7 to the tenth power dx. So looking at this, um, first off, we have a product in here and you can't you can't just take the antiderivative of each piece individually. That's why we have to use a u-substitution or another integration method. Um, so remember, you only can take, you know, if it's term by term for a sum or a difference, you can integrate that way. But if it's a product or a quotient in here, you can't just take the antiderivatives of each piece. Uh, so when I look at this, I say, okay, maybe a u-substitution might work. Now remember, our goal is to get into one of our three forms here, right? Integral of u to the n, e to the u, or 1 over u. Um, 
for me, when I look at this problem here, I see that I have something raised to a power. So I'm going to try to let u equal the inside of that. Now, this might not always work, but if it does, you know, then you can use a u substitution. So I'm going to say, you know, let u equal x to the fourth plus 7. And then when you go to find du, it's important that you're not just replacing whatever you have and calling everything else du. When you actually find du, what you're doing is you're taking the derivative of u. Make sure you realize that. So this is something that you have to actually do. You don't just shove it into the problem. So we have x to the fourth. The derivative of that would be 4x to the third. The derivative of 7 just goes to 0. So this is 4x to the third dx because we took derivative with respect to x there. And then I look to see, can I replace right 4x to the third dx in my problem with du? Well, in this case, here it is, 4x to the third dx. So this part all gets replaced with du. It has to be equivalent. If it's missing any of this, you can't just substitute it right in. And we'll talk about that in some future examples. So once I have that, all right, I'm going to rewrite it uh, in terms of u. So we have the integral of, now this 4x to the third dx, it's all going to be the du. Typically we write that at the end. Here x to the fourth plus 7 to the tenth. That was what we called u. So we have u to the tenth. All right, and then this 4x to the third dx gets replaced with du. Now at this point, you shouldn't have any other variables in the problem except for u. In other words, u's and x's can't be in there at the same time. If they are, then you're not doing this correctly. Um, because when we go to integrate this, we want to integrate it with respect to u. That's what the du is telling us. So now we take the antiderivative, right? And the integral of u to the 10th du, we know how to do this. We add 1 to the exponent, so it's u to the 11th power over, remember you divide by that same new exponent, and then plus c. And then lastly, Make sure you do this. Uh, when you have a u substitution, the last thing you want to do is you want to back substitute in for whatever u was. You picked u at the beginning, x to the 4th plus 7. So this is going to be x to the 4th plus 7 raised to the 11th power, all over 11 plus c. And then you've integrated it. Now, if you're not sure if you got the correct answer, if you take the derivative of this, remember, it should give you the argument, all right, the inside of your integral, the integrand. So... That's how we integrate this. You have to show the work. You can't just show me this and then show me this. I need to see how you got there. Um, this is a product in here, right? Things are being multiplied. So you can't just take uh, the derivative piece by piece like you might have with addition or subtraction when you did it term by term. Uh, let's take a look at another one. Now this might seem similar, but it is slightly different. Uh, if I said I had the integral of 4x squared times x to the third plus 7 raised to the fifth power dx. All right, first thing you should notice is that you have a product in here. You have things that are being multiplied. And if these are being multiplied together, you can't just take the antiderivative of each piece. So I'm going to try to use a u substitution. To use a u substitution, remember I'm trying to get to one of my three forms that I know here. Um, and in this case, I'm going to try to get this to look like, well, I see I have this uh, polynomial being raised to a power. So if I let u equal the inside of this, I get u to a power. So I'll pick this to be u inside of here, and I'll let u equal uh, the x to the third plus 7. And then i got to find du. Remember, you're finding du. You're not just putting it into the problem. du is the derivative of u. So du is, we have x to the third plus 7, the derivative of x to the third would be 3x squared. The derivative of 7 goes to 0, so it's 3x squared dx. Now, do I have exactly 3x squared dx in my integral? Well, no, I got 4x squared dx. Now, there's a few different ways people handle this. Um, the way I like to look at it is, okay, I need to worry about the variable part. The 4 is a constant in front. It doesn't matter. So really, I just have to be able to replace the x squared dx here. Right? That's the part that's giving me the problem because I can't have any x's in my integral right now. The 4 can stay. It's a constant. Well, how do I make this look like x squared dx on the right side? Well, if this is 3 times x squared dx, you can divide each side of this by 3, and you really know that du over 3 is going to be equal to the x squared dx. So I'm going to replace this x squared dx with du over 3. Remember, you're not just pushing du into the problem. What you're really doing is you're finding du, and then now we're rewriting it in a form that will fit the, uh, the expression I have, so the x squared dx. So when I go to rewrite this, 
I will have the integral. 4 will stay 4 in front, that's okay. Um, we've got this x squared dx and get replaced with du over 3, and I'll do that in a second. Typically we put that towards the end. Um, and then we have x to the third plus 7 to the fifth. Remember that got replaced with u inside, so it's u to the fifth, and then the x squared dx gets replaced with du over 3. Now, you probably want to bring the constants to the front. It's just easier to work with that way. When you have this over 3, that's like dividing by 3. So this is really the same as saying 4 thirds, right? That's 4 over 3, the integral of u to the fifth du. So before we integrate this, let's just take a step back and make sure we understand what happened here. So I picked u to be the inside function here because that's what was being raised to the power. And a lot of times that's how it'll work out. u will be the inside function because... Um, it's coming from a chain rule. Uh, not always, but a lot of the times. Uh, when I look at this, the 4x squared dx, remember I'm not really trying to replace 4x squared dx. What I'm really trying to do is just make sure the x squared dx gets replaced. If the 4 happens to get replaced, that's fine. But what we did is we pick u, and then you take du to be the derivative of u, which gave us 3x squared dx. Once I had that, I looked at what I needed to replace up here. I had the 4x squared dx, which was left over. The 4 doesn't matter. It's a constant, so it can stay. But the x squared dx had to get replaced. So we divided both sides of this by 3 to make this side look like x squared dx. So then I knew x squared dx can get replaced with du over 3. And I've replaced it there. This integral no longer has x's in it. And that's our goal. Remember, u's and x's can't be in there at the same time. Once you've done that part, uh, you can factor your constants to the front. I would recommend doing this just to save yourself um, some time here. The 4 thirds gets brought to the front. So you have 4 thirds, the integral of u to the 5th du, and now we're ready to integrate this. So if I integrate this, 4 thirds stays in front. The antiderivative of u to the 5th du, remember how this works. It's u, you add one of the exponents, so it's u to the 6th, divided by 6, and then plus c at the end. Uh, and we can write plus c like that. We don't have to put the 4 thirds times it because that still be a constant. And then we'll simplify this. We get 4 thirds, um, you know, times u to the 6th over 6. This would be uh, the 4 and the 6 can reduce by a 2. So this would be 2 and this would be 3. So you got 2 thirds uh, times u to the 6th over 3, which would make this 2 ninths. And then u to the 6th plus c, just multiplying those across. And then now we're coming back substituting for u, remember, because remember, if the original problem had x's in it, your answer should have x's in it at the end. So this equals 2 ninths times replacing u with what we call the x to the third plus 7 to the sixth power. Make sure you have that power on the outside of it plus c. And that would be the antiderivative for this. All right, using u substitution. Uh, let's take a look at a couple other examples. So if I was looking at this one here, if I said I had the integral of 3x squared over uh, 2 plus x to the third, and that's raised to the fifth power in the denominator, dx. And now I have a quotient. So again, you can't just take the antiderivative of the numerator and the antiderivative of the denominator. It doesn't work like that. If I have a quotient, you may want to try to use a u substitution. It doesn't necessarily always work, but it might help you. And you want to determine how I'm going to pick u. Um, well, typically, we've been saying pick u to be the inside function. Pick u to be the thing that's being raised to the power. So if I'm looking at this, I'm going to let u equal, according to what I've been saying, the 2 plus x to the third. Because that would make this u to a power on the outside. And then we have to say, okay, well, if that's u, what's du? Remember, du is the derivative of u. So if I have 2 plus x cubed, the derivative of 2 goes to 0. The derivative of x cubed becomes 3x to the second power. And then make sure write dx after it because you're taking derivative with respect to x. And you're going to need that because you're going to try to replace it in the problem. So the 2 plus x cubed, that's the u. So we'll end up with a u to the fifth in the denominator. And now I have du is equal to 3x squared dx. Well, do I have 3x squared dx here? Well, I do. 3x squared times dx, that's right here. So 
I can actually replace the whole thing because the three was already taken care of in there. In the previous example, when I had the four, it wasn't taken care of in there, so I had to handle it differently. So in this case, that part there is all going to get replaced with du. And so my integral is equal to the integral of, really this is, if you don't have anything in your numerator, remember that's really like a one over. Um, sometimes you might just see it written as du over. And then this is u to the fifth in the denominator. Which you might see this written as the integral of 1 over u to the fifth du. Which is fine. Now remember, the goal was to get to one of my forms. Now the forms I have are the integral of u to the n du, the integral of e to the u du, or the integral of 1 over u du. Be very careful here, because this 1 over u is only if you have u to the first power. Right? Any other power on u in the denominator, you can't take natural law. What you really have to do is rewrite this. Uh, and remember the way we rewrote this. So the way we rewrite this, right, so this is a rewrite step, is the integral of u to what power? Because I need this to be u to a power. Well, 5 in the denominator moves up to the numerator as a negative 5 du. Make sure you have du in there. If you don't have du, it's not correct. So the integral of u to the negative fifth with respect to u. And then now we're ready to take the antiderivative. So from here... I know this equals u to the add 1 to the exponent. Be careful. Negative 5 plus 1 makes it negative 4. And divide by that same new exponent. So divide by negative 4. And then plus c. Make sure you have plus c. Because there's a constant there. And then we'll simplify this. Simplifying this. u to the negative 4 moves it to the denominator. The negative here in front. Uh, this is a negative 4. So you can write it as negative 1 over the 4 is in the denominator. So that negative in front is that same negative sign. u to the negative 4 moves down as u, and you make the power positive, plus c. And then lastly, uh, you want to back substitute in for u. Because remember, we want this in terms of x, because the original problem was in terms of x. So we had negative 1 over 4 times 2 plus x cubed raised to the 4th power plus c. And that would be the antiderivative. So, you know, the key thing here is making sure that you're aware enough that when you have this u to the fifth, you rewrite that as u to the negative five. You don't want to write this as natural log, which is what some people do by mistake. Remember, natural log, when you're taking the antiderivative, only comes up if you had one over u to the first power in the denominator. Um, let's take a look at another example here. So for this example, if I had the integral of, that's going to look similar to what I just did, 3x squared over 2 plus x to the third dx. Uh, so again, I have a quotient. All right, when I have a quotient um, to take the antiderivative, you know, you might want to try using a u substitution. It may or may not work, but you know you can't do it piece by piece. You can't do the antiderivative of the numerator or the antiderivative of the denominator. That's a common mistake people make, but it's not allowed because it's not how antiderivatives work. Uh, now, in the previous examples, we were picking u to be whatever is kind of being raised to the power, the inside function. Uh, if that isn't occurring, you know, maybe there isn't a function that's being raised to a power, you usually want to pick u to be the one that has the higher exponent in the function. And the reason we say that is because usually if you take the derivative, the exponent reduces down to be the exponent you might need for the other function. So I'm going to let u equal, in this case, the 2 plus x to the third. So if I let u equal 2 plus x to the third, all right, that's u, then we have to find du. Well, what's du here? du is the derivative of u. The derivative of 2 is 0. The derivative of x to the third will be 3x squared. Then make sure you write dx, because with respect to x. And then I want to look up here and say, okay, am I replacing any of the pieces here with what I have for the three for du, which is 3x squared dx? Well, I do actually have the entire 3x squared dx. You know, if you had to manipulate this, you would. But this gets replaced with du. So how do I write this? Well, this will be the integral of, you know, remember, this 3x squared dx gets replaced with du. So the whole numerator is going to really be a 1 over... Uh, 2 plus x to the third, that denominator is just u, 
And then the du here is right, the same du. This is really one du. It's all in the numerator, but usually we write that du at the end. So this is the antiderivative of 1 over u du. Now, you may have seen this written as the integral of du over u, right? If you just replace this with du here in the numerator. But more often than not, you're going to want to look at it this way because you're familiar with that form. Now, be careful here. This is one, the integral of 1 over u du. So which form do I have? Well, I actually have you know, the third form of the integral I was talking about, the 1 over u du. And you want to keep it in that form. Don't rewrite this as u to the negative 1 power and try to use the first rule. Because remember, if you made the power negative 1, then you would be dividing by 0 when you integrate. So that's not allowed. So looking at this, the integral of 1 over u du is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Right? That's the integral of 1 over u. And then you want to back substitute. Doing our back substitution, remember you're replacing u, so we have the natural log of, how do we pick u? Well, we picked it to be 2 plus x to the third power, and then plus c, and then you have it. So the last two examples were very similar, but they are very different, right? Because one of them gave you a form that you ended up with u to a power, right? And this one, we end up with the form of 1 over u. So understanding the difference between those is really important uh, because it does change what your answer would be, right? In this one here, you started with 1 over u to the fifth, but then you had to replace that or rewrite that as u to the negative 5 to use the correct rule. Do not take natural log down there. Here, because it was 1 over u to the first power, you did use natural log. All right, let's take a look at a few more examples. Uh, if I had the integral of x squared e to the x cubed power dx. Again, you should notice you have a product, two functions being multiplied together here. And if you have a product of functions, you might want to try u substitution. When we're trying u substitution, we have goals. We're trying to get to one of these three forms here, right? The u to the n, e to the u, or 1 over u as our integrand. And in this case, because I notice I have e to a power in here, my goal really is going to be to try to make it look like this. Now, will it look like e to the u? Maybe, maybe not. But it should be one of our first lines of defense because it will help us uh, decide right away if we can get to this form or not. So I'm going to let u equal the power on e, which would be x to the third power. And then remember how you find du. du is the derivative of u. So if I say the derivative of u, the derivative of x to the third power, well, that's going to be 3x squared. And then make sure you put dx because with respect to x. And then, so I know this piece here, right, this is going to get replaced with u to make this e to the u. And then I have to figure out, well, can I replace this x squared dx? Well, x squared dx, right now I've got 3x squared dx. I can't just put du in here for this. What I really have to do is divide both sides of this by 3 and say, okay, I can replace it with du over 3 is equal to the x squared dx because that's how I can cancel here and make that look in the form I need. So I'm going to replace the d x squared dx with du over 3. Don't just put du there because du is 3x squared dx. So you divide by 3 on each side, so it's going to be du over 3. So rewriting this integral, we have the integral of e to the u power, right, e to the x cubed to be e to the u, and then x squared dx gets replaced with du over 3. And again, you shouldn't have any x's in here at the same time you have u, so then at least we've removed the x's, and now we can integrate with respect to u. Uh, if you notice that you have that 1 third here, right, this 3 in the denominator is really like a 1 over 3 as the uh, coefficient, so this is like a 1 third in front. You can factor that out, the integral of e to the u du. And then how do you evaluate this? Well, this is one-third. What's the antiderivative of e to the u? Well, that's e to the u. This is why we tried to get to this form. Plus, make sure you put plus c at the end because you're adding a constant. And then lastly, when you're doing this, remember you have to back substitute in for u. So we had u equals x to the third. So we have one-third e uh, to the x to the third power plus c. 
And that's our antiderivative. Remember, you want it in terms of x because the original problem was in terms of x. So if you can get to a form where you can get e to the u, that's really helpful because the antiderivatives of e to the u are just e to the u. Be very careful here, though, when you're replacing the x squared dx part, right? You don't just push du on top of it. You have to find du and then make sure that the pieces match that you're replacing. So that's how we, why we divide it by 3 on both sides. Uh, let's take a look at a few more. Uh, let's say I had this example here. Uh, the integral of natural log of 4x over x dx. This one's a little different. Um, you know, you have a quotient of functions here, so again, you're going to try to use u substitution or other methods, um, but you can't just take antiderivatives of the numerator or denominator. Our goal is to get to one of our three forms, right? Either u to the n, e to the u, or 1 over u. When I look at what I have here, you know, I don't see anything like as u to a power. Um, I don't see any e's in here. And you might think the 1 over u, because you can make x equal u, but then the derivative of that um, for x would just be 1 dx, and you still would never replace that first part, the ln of 4x. So if you see natural log in a problem, this is just kind of a, a little tip. If you're trying to use u substitution, you kind of want to always make u equal the natural log piece. And the reason you want to is that none of our integrals have natural log in them, the ones that we know how to integrate. So we don't know how to integrate natural log. And since we don't know how to integrate it, if we replace it with u, then we don't have to see it in the problem when we go to do our antiderivative. So when I'm looking at this, I'm going to let u equal natural log of 4x. So if I see natural log in a problem, I'm going to let u equal that function typically to see if it works out. Once I've picked u, uh, you have to find du. Remember, du is the derivative of u. And the derivative of natural log of 4x, well, this is a chain rule problem, right? We have a function of a function. And remember how it works. You take the derivative of the outside. So derivative of natural log is always 1 over whatever's on the inside. So 1 over 4x. And then you multiply by the derivative of the inside. What's well, the derivative of 4x? Well, that's just times 4. And then make sure you write dx after this because you're taking it with respect to x. And then you want to simplify this. Well, what happens? The 4s cancel out. So I have du equals 1 over x dx. Now, does that replace what I have left here? Well, if you're looking at this, you know, it might not be clear to you. This x in the denominator, though, is really like a 1 over x times dx. So it does replace it. If it helps to see it, I'm just going to do a quick little rewrite here just to help you see this. This is really the same as saying natural log of 4x times 1 over x dx, right? These are equivalent. It's just taking that 1 over x and, and factoring it out as its own, uh, own function. And what you're replacing is, okay, we said ln of 4x, that's u. And then the 1 over x dx, that was actually what du came out to be. So we can just replace it directly as du. And now we'll take this antiderivative. So I end up with, after my substitution, the integral of u du, which isn't too bad. Taking the antiderivative here, this is u to the first power, so remember how it works. You're going to add 1 to the exponent, so we would have, this is u to the second power over that same new exponent, so divided by 2, plus c. And then remember, you have to back substitute for u. u is equal to natural log of 4x. This is the natural log of 4x Make sure you know this, it's the quantity squared, it's not the 4x getting squared, it's the whole natural log of 4x getting squared, because that's what u was, and this is all over 2, plus c. So if you have natural log in one of these problems, um, a lot of the times you want to let u equal natural log. It's actually a good way to remove the natural log from the problem, and it also can help you get into one of the forms you know, because we don't know how to take the antiderivative of natural log otherwise. So it's good to get it out of the problem to begin with. Uh, let's just take a look at a few more. I'm just trying to give you a good flavor of all the different types of examples you might see. Uh, if I was to write this one here. So, for example, if I had... the integral of... Uh, we'll say 5t to the... 
third power times the square root of t to the fourth minus one dt. So again, the first thing you should notice here is that you have the product of functions, uh, which is you know something that should stand out because you have five t to the third times the square root of t to the fourth minus one. Um, and then if you're trying to take the antiderivative of this, you know, we can't do this piece by piece. You know, we have to actually uh, try using the u-substitution or other methods. So if I wanted to use a u-substitution on this, you know, one of the things that might be important to see at the very beginning is that typically when we had a root in one of our problems before, we rewrote the root. And I would say, you know, you want to rewrite this integral using, you know, the uh, rational exponent instead of the root. So I'm going to write, rewrite this, rw is for rewrite, 5t to the third. And then instead of the square root of t to the fourth, I'm going to write it as t to the fourth minus 1 to the, remember, square root is 1 half power. It's 1 over whatever the index of the root was. In this case, the index of the square root is 2. You know, if this was the third root, it would be 1 over 3. If this was the fourth root, it would be 1 over 4. And then dt. So remember our goals. Our goals are to get to one of these forms that we already know, right? Integral of u to the n, integral of e to the u, or integral of 1 over u. Well, this is, right, something being raised to a power. It's a function being raised to a power. So you typically would want to choose uh, your value for u to be the function that's inside of the radical in these problems, uh, at least to start, to try it out, because uh, it's a good way to get to what you might need. So if I was doing that, I would pick u to equal t to the fourth minus 1. Right, so this part in here is u, and then I got to find du. Remember, du is the derivative of u, so the derivative of t to the fourth. Well, that's four t to the third. The derivative of negative one is just zero, and then make sure you put dt after this because with respect to t, and then you're looking to replace in your function. I have five t to the third dt. The five is a constant, so it doesn't matter. So the t to the third dt is what I do need to replace. Um, right now I got 4t to the third dt. You can't just throw the 4 in there with it, right? You have to kind of think about, okay, if I'm replacing t to the third dt, this part right here, how do I replace that? Well, how do I get this to look like t to the third dt? Well, I'm going to divide both sides of this by, oh, by 4. And by 4. So I end up with du over 4. Right, equals t to the third dt, and that's how <coughs> that's how I'll replace this t to the third dt up here with du over four. The five remember is a constant, so you don't have to replace that. If it came out nice and there was a five here when you did the derivative, great. But there isn't. Keep the five in there, and then just make sure you get to the the values you need to replace the variables, because the constants can always stay in front. So rewriting this with our substitution, we have the integral of 5 will stay 5. Um, the t to the 4th minus 1 to the 1 half. Remember the inside of that got replaced with u, so we have u to the 1 half power. And then the t to the 3rd dt got replaced with du over 4, so make sure you write du over 4. Remember, there shouldn't be any t's left in this part of the, uh, the problem. You really should have everything in terms of u. Right? And now once I do this, you know, I can take that constant of 5 over 4 and bring it to the front. Remember, 5 fourths is a constant. Remember, you're always allowed to bring the constant to the front of an antiderivative. So we have 5 fourths, the integral of u to the 1 half power, du. And then when you take that antiderivative, uh, remember, you're adding one of the exponent and dividing by that same new exponent. So this would equal 5 fourths, stays in front. We have u to the add 1 to that, so 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves power. You divide by that same new power, which is 3 halves, you know, eventually you'll multiply that by the reciprocal. Uh, and then we have plus c at the end. Once you've done this, um, let's simplify it. So to simplify here, we end up with, this is 5 fourths times 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. And then when we go to get our final answer here, uh, remember what's happening. We can multiply this 
uh, the 5 fourths times 2 thirds. The uh, 2 and the 4 will cancel to a 1 over a 2. So we have 5 times 1, which would give us 5, over 2 times 3, which gives us 6. And then u, remember, you're back substituting in for u. It was u was the t to the 4th minus 1. So this is 5, 6 times uh, t to the 4th minus 1 to the 3 halves power plus c. And that's okay to leave it uh, as a rational exponent. If the exponent was negative, I would say move it to the denominator. But uh, we don't have to necessarily rewrite that as a root. We can leave it like that. All right, so just another type of example you might see. Um, let's take a look at this one here. So if I said to let, uh, let's take the integral of t to the second power times e to the negative t to the third power dt. Again, we have a product here. If we have a product, you might want to think about rewriting that using a u substitution. These are the possible forms, right? We have the integral of u to the n, integral of e to the u, or the integral of 1 over u. Because I see an e in this problem, you know, my first instinct would be, all right, let's try to make u the exponent on e, because I know how to integrate that. And it's also helpful to notice that the power of this function that's left over down here is one less than that one, because that's usually how it will work out. But I'm going to say let u equal the exponent on e, so we're going to say let u equal negative t to the third power. And then what's du? Well, du, remember, is the derivative of u. So we had negative t to the third. The derivative of the negative stays in front. 3 comes down, so negative 3t to the second power dt. And then once you've done that, you want to try to replace the variables that you have left. Well, I have a t squared dt left here. Right now, my my derivative for u, du, equals negative 3t squared dt. We need just t squared dt, so I'm going to divide both sides of this by negative 3 and divide by negative 3. So I got du over negative 3 is equal to the t squared dt, and that's what I'm going to replace it with up here. So du over negative 3. So this antiderivative is going to equal the antiderivative of, this is e to the u now, and then t squared dt got replaced with du over negative 3. And it's very similar to the example we had earlier. Don't let the negative in the exponent throw you off. It just changes what happens with your derivative. Um, once I'm here, remember I'm going to bring the uh, constants to the front. So to factor that out, remember this negative 3 is in the denominator, so I'm really factoring out a negative 1 third to the front because you're taking a negative 3 in the denominator or 1 in the numerator, so 1 over negative 3 is the same as negative 1 third. E to the u, du. And remember, there shouldn't be any x's or t's in this case in your uh, integral anymore. You can take the antiderivative, you got negative 1 third. The antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u plus c. And then uh, simplifying this, or substitution, back substitution, I should say, you're going to take the u, substituting negative t to the third. So you got negative one third e to the negative t to the third plus c. Uh, when you do this, the negative exponent on e doesn't need to be moved down to the denominator because it'll never be undefined because it's got a positive base. Um, so you could leave it like that. If you moved it down to the denominator, that'd be okay too. And we'll look at one more example here. Suppose you had a definite integral. So for a definite integral, I mean one that has limits of integration. You still do the same thing, but there's a slight change, and it actually makes it a little easier to work with. If I have an integral from 1 to 2 of x times x squared minus 1 raised to the 7th power dx. All right, so first thing, notice you have a product. That's that's one of our indications that we might want to try u substitution. Uh, we want to get into one of our forms that we talked about, u to the n, e to the u, or 1 over u as our integrand. Uh, in this case, 
I see I have this piece here being raised to a power, this function raised to a power, so I'm going to try to let u equal the inside. Remember, a lot of times we say let u equal the one that's on the inside. Uh, so I'm going to let u equal uh, x squared minus 1. Well, then du, remember, that's the derivative of u. Don't just try to push it into the problem. The derivative of u, derivative of x squared would be 2x, and then make sure you put dx because with respect to x. And what part do I need to replace? Well, I just have to replace this x dx. Well, how do I replace x dx? If I have du equals 2x dx, I need to make this look just like x dx. So I'm divide by 2, divide by 2, so I have du over 2 equals, the 2's cancel here, you get x dx. So you're going to replace the x dx with du over 2. Now, when you do this, remember these limits of integration? This is where the, the process changes just a little bit. The limits of integration here from 1 to 2, these were x values you would sub in eventually. But we're replacing all my x's with u's. And you have to do the same thing with the limits of integration. So let's do that in a second. Let's just write the integral. I'm not going to put the limits on here. You can't put 1 to 2 on it, though. Um, and then we have u to the seventh power. And then x dx gets replaced with du over 2. Now let's talk about those limits of integration. These were x values from 1 to 2. We want to make them u values. Well, how do you do it? Well, the u equals x squared minus 1 tells you how to do it. You sub the x value into here, and it'll give you the corresponding u value. So for the lower limit, when we had 1, I would sub in u equals 1 squared minus 1, which ends up equaling 1 minus 1, which is 0. So my lower limit becomes 0. My upper limit, same idea. You're going to take that x value of 2 and you're going to sub it in for x here into the u so you can get what the corresponding u value is. So it would be u equals 2 squared minus 1. So it's 4 minus 1, so that equals 3. So this is the upper limit. So if you don't change these limits of integration here, you should write nothing. You should not write 1 to 2. That would be incorrect and I'd take off points for it. So we have our new integral going from 0 to 3 of u to the 7th. Uh, times du over 2. And then from this, uh, you probably want to bring the 1 half in front like we've done in the past. 1 half the integral from 0 to 3, u to the 7th du. We take the antiderivative of this. We have 1 half. And then the antiderivative of u to the 7th would be u to the 8th over 8, remember. And then when you do a definite integral, this is where it changes a little bit. You got the limits from 0 to 3. Make sure you put from 0 to 3 here. Because we're going to evaluate the definite integral. Uh, what you don't have to do once you're at this step is you don't have to back substitute. As long as you've changed your limits of integration, you're ready to go right from there to substitute in. So this is where it differs a little bit. With a definite integral, you don't need to do back substitution. So you'd end up with 1 half times, now what do we do? We sub in the upper limit. So we'd have 3 to the eighth over 8 minus subbing in the lower limit, 0 to the eighth over 8. And then we're going to simplify this. So we end up with 1 half times uh, 3 to the 8th power. If we do that on here. 3 to the 8th power. Uh, we got 6, 5, 6, 1 over 8. All right, so 6,561 over 8. Minus, remember, this term just goes to 0. And then we want to multiply those together. Uh, so we got 6,561 over 2 times 8 is 16. These don't have any common factors, you know, because 65, 61 was made up of all 3s, right? Factors of 3, 2 and 8, or all factors of 2, actually. So this would be the exact answer. You don't have to do a back substitution because it's a definite integral, and you've already changed your limits of integration to be u values. If you had kept these from 1 to 2 at the very beginning and you left these on here, then you'd be substituting in the wrong thing, right? You wouldn't be substituting in 3 and 0. You'd be substituting 1 and 2, which would give you a completely different answer. Now, where some people learn this differently is that they still would have to do everything that we just did, but sometimes people will leave off the limits of integration from 0 to 3, and they won't put anything here. And it's okay if you put nothing there. And then what they do is they pick up at the step where they have the 1 half u to the 8th over 8, but they would say, okay, when I have 1 half uh, u to the 8th over 8, and they wouldn't have any limits on here, they would say then it equals in their back sub, well, it would be 1 half times uh, the u over 8, the u gets replaced with the x squared minus 1. 
So what they would do is they take one half the u to the eighth over eight, and instead of writing the limits of integration on this, they would say it's equal to one half, and then they replace u with the x squared minus one to the eighth over eight, and then they would use the limits from one to two then. So they bring the limits back in later if they didn't change them. I would recommend always changing your limits of integration right away because it'll make it easier to work with at the end of the problem. Um, if you don't change them here though, you better not keep them one to two because they're not the same values. Um, you would need to actually just leave them off, get to this step and then bring them back in. And then if you were to sub these in, two squared would be four minus one, give you three, three to the eighth, you'd still get the same three to the eighth. And if you subbed in one, one squared minus one, you'd still get zero, which gives you zero to the eighth. But it's a little more convoluted because you have to do a back substitution, where in this case you didn't. So for a definite integral, change your limits of integration. You still handle it like you normally would for a u substitution. Once you've done that, though, at the end of the problem, you can just substitute in your limits of integration and keep it in terms of u. There's no need for a back sub. So uh, hopefully this helped. I tried to give quite a few examples of how to use substitution. Um, you know, if substitution doesn't work, we have another method uh, for when we have a product of functions, which we'll talk about. Uh, in the next section.